you absolutely need to um, focus on your accuracy of grasp for these next little bits. Um, we have talked before, bless you, about the difference, but I just want to remind you, about the difference between graphing something just as a kind of like a tool to get to something else. Like I, I'm given a problem, they don't ask me to graph, but a graph is very useful, as opposed to when graphing is the thing that you are producing, okay? So because at the moment we're focusing on the graph as the object that you're actually you know, putting forward, I think this is worth three marks, um, you've really got to bank on it and make it a really important shape, okay? So we're gonna begin, the, the, the most basic cubic equation that we can start with is y equals x cubed, okay? And as we have a look at this, um, we're going to focus on some of the things that make it very similar to shapes that we've looked at before, um, most namely the parabola, the quadratic, okay? They are, after all, in the same family. Uh, by the way, that's probably worth mentioning. This whole family, quadratics, cubics, does anyone know what it would be called if we change this to a four? We've actually said this name offhand, but haven't dealt with it specifically. When it's a power of four, we call this a quartic. Quartic, as in like quarter, like four, right? Anyone want to make any guesses if it was five? Pentic is a good guess. And to be honest, um, the actual name is Quintic, right? Um, I, don't, I don't know if one's like Latin and one's Greek, Pentagon, because you don't have Quintagons anyway. Uh, these continue going up and up and up. We'll get to we'll get to the circles a little later on, um, but all of these morning, all of these are in the family of objects called polynomials, right? So these are all all of these guys. Okay, and as a consequence, you have a lot of similar qualities between these. Here's the first thing I'm going to start with. You know when you graph a function of any kind. The, one of the most important features you're going to put on here are the intercepts, right? The intercepts. So I want you to have a think with me. How might you get an intercept, intercept, any kind of intercept out of this? How do you usually find something like, say, a y-intercept? What do you do? Zero. You let x equal zero, and then you get y equals something else, right? So if I put x equals zero into this, when x equals zero, right? By the way, really, really minor thing. I'm going to say, I'm going to suggest, I'm going to encourage you to write this working that I'm about to put down here um, alongside your graph here because it's going to help inform your thoughts. And it might seem like a little thing, but I encourage you to write the word when. And you're like, why do I have to put words here? When. When. Okay? Um, I'll explain why I'm not saying let in a minute. Okay? I'm not going to just say x equals zero and then do a thing. Okay, because the whole point behind having an equation like this is that x can be, well let me ask you this question, what does it look like the domain, we've been thinking about domain and range before, what does it look like the domain of this function will be? This, I can put pretty much any x value I like in here, it doesn't break any rules. You're never going to take the square root of a negative number, there are no square roots. Um, you're never going to divide by zero, there's no division in here. Okay? So I can put any x in here you like. And the whole point is x can be anything, but sometimes it takes on particular values and they're going to be on our graph. Right? So when x equals zero, what will y equal? Zero. Zero. I'm going to do the substitution. I'm not even going to think about it yet. I'm just going to do the substitution and then you can tell me what it means. I'm going to write 0 instead of x everywhere I see x in this thing, which is only once. And then I'm going to write the rest of it, right? 0 cubed, of course, is? Zero. That's 0. 0 times 0 times 0. So, when you see this, right, what that means is, and this part I'm going to ask you to write down, but in the future you're going to start to, you're going to stop writing this because it will become like apparent to you, right? What I can say is, on the basis of this, right, that I've got an x and a y together, this is a pair of coordinates, right? So what this is saying is, 0, 0, right, there's the x, there's the y, is a point on my graph, right? When, when I do this, that's the conclusion I draw, right? 0, 0 is a point on y equals x cubed, on my graph. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place that onto my set of axes, okay? Oh, by the way, I probably should have labeled those. You get the idea, okay? Now, 
We could keep on doing this for a while, but it looks like we've got an x-intercept and a y-intercept all in one. That's a nice bonus, okay? As I think about what's going to happen as I put in other values, um, if I were to put in, I'm not going to write these anymore. If I were to put in 1 for x, what would I get? One. I would get y equals 1. So 1 comma 1 is another point on my graph. I'm going to place that here. 1, 1. Okay. When I put 2 into here, what's y going to be equal to? It's going to be 8. This thing is skyrocketing and it's skyrocketing fast, right? So if I go across to 2, I'm already up here at 8. Does that make sense? 2,8 is a point on my graph. So you can see this thing is sort of ratcheting up all the way, right? It's going to climb fast. In fact, I already no longer have space on my graph anyway to put the next thing. If x were equal to 3, what would y be equal to? 27, 3 cubed is 27, so that's way off my set of axes, so okay, it's going to be up the top, right? So that's what's happening on the left hand side. It's getting steeper and steeper and steeper as we go, so I could actually connect up the dots sort of thing over here. I could say, oh, this is going to sort of come down like this. It starts off nice and slow, and then it just kind of races off really, really fast up in the um, positive direction, okay? It's not a great graph, but I'm going to run with it still. I think it's close enough for our purposes. Okay, so I've got the positive side of this, but we established before that the domain also exists over on the left, right? When I put negative values into here, though, unlike when we thought about the quadratics, right? The quadratic, uh, the parabola is going to go off in this direction, because when you square a number, what happens to the sign? It's always going to be positive, right? So you stay up above, right? But this doesn't happen for the cubic, does it, right? If you, it goes down because if you were to put, um, this one is worth writing, right? If, you, if I put in x equals negative 1, right? So I can take on this value too. y is going to be equal to, and just be careful how you write this, yeah? Um, especially when you put this into a calculator, you can get quite um, confused because your calculator will tell you exactly what it is you ask for, so unless you ask for it wrong. Okay, yeah, so this is negative 1 cubed as opposed to, I'm going to, don't write this down, as opposed to negative 1 cubed, right? These are two different things. It just so happens coincidentally at the moment, they're the same. That's just negative 1, but your calculator thinks about these differently, right? It's going to go negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Your brain should think about it differently as well, right? And if it's 2, it's just 1. Exactly right. If I did negative 1 squared, Th those are quite different, aren't they? Yeah, if, do you have your calculator there? Do you have your calculator there? If it's not, get it out. If you pop this into your calculator, right, what's it going to do? What does it actually tell you? Yeah, no brackets. It says, oh, I know what. It has an order of operations built in. Yeah, it squares the one. Right? And then it's like, oh, you want a negative as well. No problem, I'll give you negative 1. Right? But of course, negative 1, if we did this twice, it'd be negative 1 times negative 1, they would cancel. Okay? So what does this tell us? Right? I can say, therefore, negative 1, negative 1, that's on my graph. Right? I'm going to put that there. I've got to make sure this is consistent. And you can see there is going to be a symmetry to this graph. Right? What kind of symmetry is it? We have a name for this, don't we? It's the di uh, It has rotational symmetry. I could spin this this graph. I could spin it around, so it goes sort of down like this, right? What's the name of this? It's odd symmetry, isn't it? And we actually to remind you because I know with Mrs. Lee's you looked at this already. Part of the way you can know why odd symmetry is called odd symmetry is have a look at the power, right? It's an odd number. And in fact, any polynomial which has this kind of structure is going to have this kind of symmetry. Okay. All right. Now, this is more or less y equals x cubed. Say it again. Minus two. Minus eight. Because it's going down, isn't it? Okay. You could put more points on to get more detail if you want it. Okay. Now, I, I'm pretty happy with this, right? This is the graph of y equals x cubed. Um, just for the sake of it, I'm going to re-emphasize, I've got this point here, right? And um, I'm going to draw on here something that indicates exactly where it is. Because if you went to Desmos, for instance, and you put in y equals x cubed, you'd get a shape like this, right? But if you put in something like y equals 2x cubed, you'd get almost exactly the same shape. What would be the difference, by the way? It would be slightly different. Hmm. Interesting. So there's going to be some squishing and scaling, but which way? Rasen, what are you thinking? Um, 
but since we say 2x cubed, um, so whatever value of x we put in is going to be 2 times more than exactly. so it's Right. Why then? Uh, this is really interesting. Okay, now, this is not our main point. Okay, this is not our main point. But I do want you want to think through this with you because you really want to, you're going to be getting some of these later on. Okay, if I went through this same process, right, let's have a think about this one, right? When x equals 0, for that guy over there, what would happen when I went through and substituted x equals 0? Yeah, it's going to be 2 times 0, still 0. So y equals 2x cubed would still go through that point there, 0, 0. But when I think about this guy, oh, I didn't write it down, actually. Ah, oh, this one will do. When I put in negative 1, okay, this is still going to be the same, but there's going to be a 2 out the front, right? So what would happen on this line? Just for this particular one, that, we multiply by 2, gives me negative 2, right? So instead of being here at negative 1, negative 1, I'm going to be at negative 1, and then I'm going to be twice as far down. I'm going to be down here at negative 2. Do you agree? Right? And instead of being at uh, 2, comma 8, I'm going to be twice as high up. I'll be at 16. Right? So you're going to get the same kind of shape, but everything is pulled apart like this. It's actually going to stretch vertically. Or if you'd prefer to think about it that way, uh, it's squeezed horizontally. They actually turn out to be the same thing. Okay? Now my point is, my point is, because they basically have the same shape, but the difference is only scale, you need to provide some kind of information to show you what kind of scale there is. If I took off all of these numbers, you would not be able to tell whether it was y equals x cubed, or 2x cubed, or 200x cubed. They all said the same shape, same shape right? Yeah, it's, um, these numbers here provide some scale on there. Does that make sense? So an alternative, like saying this, saying this, is exactly the same. It's equivalent to saying this, 1 comma 1. They've got the same amount of information on there, okay? Um, and you can do either. I don't think you really necessarily need to do both because they say the same thing, but you should do one of them, okay? But because that indicates where that is. Does that make sense?